data clearly has a lot of value, especially sensitive personal data. You'd think that we'd want to own and protect it, but instead, we copy it like crazy, making it almost impossible for anyone to own data in a meaningful way. It wasn't always like that. Data used to be highly protected, but for a lot of reasons, we lost our way. Let's explore the history of data ownership and see how we got to where we are today and where we're going. Meet Ugg. Even though he lives in a cave and thinks fire is magic, his brain holds more data than any of the biggest companies on Earth today. He'll always own his data because it's all in his head. The only way he can share information is by grunting and gesturing which might be mimicked, but can't be copied. Ugg and his friends didn't have a lot to say, but they were in total control of their information. That changes about 150,000 years later, when humans start scratching and painting information onto stone. In this form, data has left the human brain and exists physically for the first time. This makes the first cracks in data ownership. Someone could carve some prehistoric graffiti over the painted information long after the creator left the scene. Things get trickier when humans start using abstract symbols to convey information as codified, copyable data, AKA writing. Just look at Poralulu, a real brewer who sold some beer to a customer in ancient Sumeria. We know this because a small clay receipt that recorded the transaction survives to this day. Alulu lost control of his data because it was recorded in a copyable and portable format. However, while written data was now portable, so few people could copy or even understand. The writing on these tablets that data ownership was still easy to preserve. When people swap clay and stone for papyrus and paper, data becomes even harder to control. Paper as we know it today originated in China and from there spread around the globe. The earliest surviving scrap of paper, a piece of map, dates to 179 BCE. Low literacy rates are still helping to maintain control over data as any copying must be done by hand by trained scribes and most of the world still can't read or write but not for much longer. In 1440, Johannes Gutenberg invents the printing press and makes it possible to mass produce data for the first time ever. 200 years later, over 50% of the population in England could read, making it one of the first societies to break that mark. In 1949, the first Xerox photocopiers hit the market, and the era of mass data copying begins in full. When we say the Xerox 914 makes copies on ordinary paper, we mean ordinary paper. For instance, office of stationery. Or how about plain bond paper? Now, if that isn't ordinary... Xerox is so good at data copying, it becomes a synonym for it. Airplanes make it easy to mail data around the globe. Advances in technology mean that data is quickly getting out of control. In the span of just 600 years, humanity has achieved the ability to make copies with minimal effort. Advances in literacy means these copies could be understood by millions of people. But it's still paper-based, meaning it could be physically locked away and not everyone had a photocopier. New and more advanced machines now enter our history of data ownership. Punch cards and early computers make technology and data intertwined. The first modern computer is developed in 1958, and the first microchip is right around the corner. In the late 60s, ARPANET, an early internet used by researchers and scientists, hints at what is to come in terms of large-scale data copying. Things start to change fast and data slips further out of our control. Data has become extremely easy to copy and data proliferation starts to become a real problem with major consequences for control and ownership. 
Copying isn't quite as easy as mouse click yet, and not everyone has access to this technology, but the digital seeds have been sown. Oracle launches the first relational database in 1979, setting a new standard for data storage and new depths for data control. Applications in app-specific data silos follow close behind. Just a dozen years later, America Online introduces millions of everyday people to the web and the world of large-scale cut-and-paste data copying. In 1994, 23-year-old Netscape engineer Lou Montul invents the browser cookie. Real cookies are good, but browser cookies invisibly collect and copy data for advertisers, setting the stage for the user tracking and targeted marketing we all know so well today. By 1996, digital data storage is more cost-effective than paper, officially ending paper's thousand-year reign as king of data. Data is fast becoming impossible to control. It exists almost entirely digitally and can not only be copied, but transported around the world instantly and with little effort. When the Apple App Store launches in 2008 and introduces the world to an app for everything, the era of data silos is in full swing. There's a database for every app and copies of data for every database. New technologies like data lakes and data warehouses emerge to connect the silos through a process known as data integration, which really involves making more copies of data than ever before. Like the loss of control created by Lou's cookies, the loss of ownership is largely unseen by human eyes, happening without anyone even knowing. It's been over 200,000 years since Ugg first interpreted data with his powerful brain, and over 40,000 years since data was first recorded in any meaningful way. Data copies are now rampant, and people have next to no control over their information. But a new innovation aims to change all that by digitally replicating what worked so well in the first place. Ugg's beautiful brain. After 40 years of Web 2.0, Define data silos and copies. New technologies that square the circle of integration and control are entering the scene. Innovations like blockchain, data fabrics, and dataware are reshaping the data management landscape by doing things like decentralizing data into nodes and using data links instead of copies. In 2022, the Zero Copy Integration Framework is established to provide innovators with an approach to build new technology without creating new databases or copy-based data integration. This is the start of the elimination of silos and copies that have been the main threats to data ownership in the digital era, giving control of data back to the people and organizations who create it, just the way UGG would have wanted. If you're ready to join the Zero Copy Revolution, visit datacollaboration.org.